Hey, Rick Maniacs, we're here with Lando taking a closer look at the minifig of the month. That's a good bit. Uh, so the minifig of the month is the Revolutionary War Soldier, and then we also have the red coat. Landon, tell yes. us a little bit about these uh, the the story between these two. Yeah, Revolutionary War. Um, I, my history isn't as good as I wish it was, so I've just been researching. Um, my focus has been mainly on the uniforms. Um, but man, there's there's so much really interesting history there. Yeah. Just seeing where all these uniforms are interconnected. Um, a lot of like French influence, uh, everything. It's, it's really cool. Um, Minifig of the month is, uh, it's the Brickmania Revolutionary War US soldier. Um, and we have him right up top here on this nice little stand. Um, where should I begin? Yeah, so I, you, you were telling me a little bit about how that is actually a standard Lego hat, but that we did our own printing on it because the quantities were tough to get of the actual Lego one. Right, yeah, so this is the Lego pirate hat, the tricorn. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, again, you'd see it in a ton of Lego pirate sets. That's kind of where I think I'm most familiar with it. Yeah. Um, but at the time, very popular um, headgear. Um, so Lego does make one that's pad printed white on top. Uh, the quantities just weren't there uh, in order to make a big batch of minifigures like this. So um, we opted to buy the standard Lego uh, tricorn hat and do our own printing in-house. So cool. taking it up to that next level. Um, cool, very, very, very slick looking, actually. Yeah, it looks good. So, um, that's the hat. Custom printed face. Uh, moving down, you have his coat. Uh, it's that blue coat. Um, really, really interesting uh, piece of, of, of clothing there. Um, kind of stylish for the time. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, um, it just, that was, that was a very common back Pretty then, late war, I would assume, that uh, any, yeah. any colonial would have been dressed up looking like this. Yeah, this, is, this would be very late war. Um, and then they, they didn't start getting this, the US didn't start getting the standard uniforms till uh, pretty late in the war. Mm -hmm. um, so um, more commonly, you'd probably just see them in, in the, their standard civilian clothing or some hunting gear kind of stuff. So, uh, but this is this is towards the end, um, and uh, yeah, you have the bandol or the uh, leather straps for um, the different uh, bayonet frog, the bayonet uh, scabbard cool. on the side, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the cartridge uh, box on the other side as well. Um, so that was kind of cool, uh, just debuting some new artwork. And there's new artwork all across the board for this. Yeah, right, figure. it has to be. Um, and that was what was interesting, because just thinking back, it's like, oh, it's a simple uniform, which, I mean, the loadout is pretty is pretty sparse, you know, um, compared Bayonet, to modern day standards. Cartridges. Yeah, right. But it, was a, it, it is a really detailed uh, uniform, actually, from head to toe. I mean, it, it's, it's very dressy looking. Um, on the other side, we have, um, in the US, uh, You'd see them more like using British gear, uh, decently commonly, um, but um, this it would be a, an American-made canteen. It's actually like a little mini wooden barrel, which is kind of cool. Um, I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, that so is that pretty interesting. Neat. Whereas the British would have a, a, some sort of metal um, mm -hmm. canteen. Um, and then um, moving down, you have the breeches and the knit socks, and that's all like kind of held together by a little uh, buckle clasp system. Um, then you have the leg gaiters out of leather and the, and the uh, shoes, so very that cool. Makes up the minifigure. The uh, British uh, red coat. We have a small batch kind of going with uh, the American. Well, in the side by side with that original Lego Lego figure too. That's between the yeah, that's a uh, little bit of an evolutionary mm -hmm. uh, no kidding gap there. So yeah, kind of interesting to see those side by side. Uh, the, the Lego one, I really actually still like it. Yeah. I like kind of the, the simple aesthetic of uh, Lego minifigures. Um, but it's fun to explore the the more realistic detailings um, with my artwork. So it's kind of it's it's they're both cool pieces to have. I think mm -hmm. um, definitely side by side, you can see that there's a there's a noticeable um, increase in the level of details in our offering. So it's just, well, it makes sense too why we're trending away from the yellow figs because when you're putting in the amount of detail that we do on the torso and on the sides, mm -hmm. you know, for those figures, like completing it with that flesh tone is what really makes it look right. realistic. Uh, if you're picking up either of these minifigures, make sure to also pick up pick up this flintlock musket that you see here in the yes. red coat. Um, that turned out great. Uh, more common than not, you would see that with a bayonet attached as well. Um, but you know, this is just a brick arm standard U-clip and the bayonet. Um, so just to complete the overall look, make sure to pick one of these up. So mm -hmm. that was a fun project as well. The uh, the perfect caliber flintlock musket. Uh, then that's starting out with just a regular brick, brick arms flintlock musket. Right. For taking it up to the next level. So. And all those colors, and then the wood grain. Every, I mean, that's that's you know, all the perfect calibers have looked really really cool so far. But every once in a while, you have just like that perfect blend of like the gun works, and then the artwork yeah. works, and it's like this one came together beautifully. Yeah. This is a, it's a, it would be a really uh, slick looking um, kind of desk display piece. Um, yeah. 
We also have like a kit that we offer with this, the six pounder that would go nicely with this uh, and a whole bunch of guys. So um, depending on how popular uh, this releases, you might see some more stuff from yeah, this era. Cool. We'll see. So that's kind of uh, up to you guys to decide if we want to have more of this stuff or not. So. Very cool. Anything uh, interesting about the uniform on the red coat? Uh, very similar uniform. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll go over that canteen again. That's some new artwork on the side. Underneath the arm there, you have the British equivalent or the, the British uh, canteen of that, and that's more of a, a metal texture. Um, I'm trying out some new simulated um, kind of metal reflections on that a little bit. So, um, other than that, I mean, obviously side by side, it's it's almost just a color change for, right, for right. a lot of it. So, um, yeah, cool. Overall, very awesome. Um, just some history there, learning about that. Um, and that's, I guess, the, the uniforms for these guys. Very, very cool. There you have it, the uh, limited release Red Coast with the uh, minifigure of the month, which is the American Revolutionary Soldier. And then obviously that perfect caliber flintlock musket. Get yourself a Brick Arms U-Clip, right? Is that what it is? Brick Arms U-Clip and a Brick and Arms a bayonet. bayonet. And I'll have that laying out <laughs> right here. Complete your setup with the, with the six pounder and we're excited to see some mocks. And then once again, like Landon was saying, if you want to see more of this stuff, leave it in the comments and let us know. Uh, but now it's time for a little impromptu history with Lando. What? Okay, in 1776, that's when America became a country. Yeah. And that's why the British were like, hey, that's totally not cool. So then they sailed over here, or they were here already, <laughs> and then that's, they showed up with all their tea and we dumped it into the ocean because we're like, we don't want you here. You can have this tea back over there. And then that's why their coats, they started out white, but then they got red because, you know, there's a fight, it's bloody. <laughs> Ours were blue because we were smarter than that. And <laughs> I don't got anything that